It's not going to go smoothly all the way up it. You know that. There's going to be moments where you're going to have to have a... give yourself a talking to. But um, who, who's sane anyway? Who's normal? I never really felt the fear. And before, I think when you're a young climber, you don't really experience the fear that much. You're quite cocky until you have like a proper climbing accident. I fell onto like a rock ledge and then I broke three ribs and cracked my pelvis. It changed my climbing forever, I think that. I just wanted to do it so much, the spirit just meant so much to me, I just really, really had to do it. Yeah, had to do it, <laughs> really had to do it. And this is what happens to these people. That's what happens when you fall on it. Jesus. We do. Jesus Christ. We've got no chance. Right, I'll do it now. One, two, one, two, anybody hear me? Yep, one, two. It's probably not the way, way most people would describe fun, but for me, I, I always go back to, to what, what you do as a kid. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd search out the, the highest looking tree that had the bendiest looking branches, and it would be a dare to see who could get, get highest on those. And, and I think that's, there's still that element of climbing, is you want to climb the maddest looking things, and Great White Fright is kind of about as mad as it gets. It's kind of quite scared, actually. No, it's like I've been here and seen it, you know what we're in for. <laughs> Great right fright, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I guess I, I, I'd always heard about chalk climbing, in particular this amazing white wave. I guess the combination of the esoteric aspect, the kind of mad British element, together with something that was actually really hard. Um, just, I knew that I really wanted to climb it. I quite enjoyed re repeating quite a few of Mick's routes. It's always a bit mad, but it's, it's usually a really, really good quality adventure. Really watches. Watch your head. Big bit coming down. Chalk's a very odd medium, really. It's similar to ice, but it's, in a way, it's kind of less predictable. Low down, where the, the rocks are getting washed by the waves, it's actually quite soft, it's almost creamy, and your ice axes go in very far, very quickly. As you get higher, the chalk dries out, and it'll hold for a short little while and then rip out. So you've kind of got to bury the axe a bit trouble is that the second pitch is a real shock horror. There, you can't even rely on the chalk that you're whamming your axe in. You like climbing a potential landslide. Literally, you've got to make sure, you've got to try and disturb like 
at least amount of it as possible. Well, this is all just going to come off in a shelf. You can't just like panic. If you panic, that's when you're going to make mistakes, really. Right? You have to calm yourself down. You just have to make sure that every step you take is like is a good, solid step. Talking to yourself and keeping your heart down, you can feel it like in your chest, and it just really wants to go like the clappers. You know, I think right next step. Come on, let's do it. Oh, it's a nice day. Sunshine, you know, and by the sea. You have to be really with it to keep yourself level-headed. Yeah, you're on your own. Many people having had such a serious accident probably wouldn't touch ice axes again. Before, he, he was very kind of playful, exuberant, very confident in a way. And afterwards, he was obviously fighting quite a lot of demons inside. But it's kind of typical of Chris's uh, bravery that um, he would get out and push himself, even though he's still absolutely terrified. meaty pitch is the last pitch and it's basically if you're climbing vertical ice it feels overhanging because you've got your ice axes on and on the great white fright there is actually overhanging chalk uh, so it's sort of double overhanging so it's just incredibly bicep blowingly pumpy really really physical I guess the big challenge is going to be whether to stop to place protection, whether whether to to run it out, get terrified, keeping keeping fresh, or uh, or stopping and placing the protection and pumping out. He's a funny character. You can see he's really enjoying it, he's in his element. I think the more scared he gets, the better he climbs. Since I think that's why he achieved what he has, because, yeah, he's just got it. Totally. Watch us here, Chris! Watch us! That's kind of been a nutter mountaineer, really, isn't it? <laughs> I think the more they do it, the more they like it. It's kind of like their fix, really. When you, when you do these quite serious routes, there's obviously points where you really wish you weren't there. But in a way, that's, that's kind of the challenge, is confronting that fear and then working out a way of pushing yourself on. Um, and that's the bit I like, really, when you can talk yourself round. And you can almost get energy from that fear to kind of push you on. And you have to kind of basically change your, your state of being from being like a mouse into a, into a monster. <laughs>
First, when I had my accident, I really didn't feel like it affected me in any way at all. Then I started climbing again, tying the rope on for the first time, and basically I got really, really frightened. So I thought to myself, I'm going to face it. I'm going to face this thing like head on. The old Chris do this. This Chris can do it as well. Just put your fears to one side and do this route. I just wanted the old Chris back. Dial five. Yeah. <laughs> you alright, Chris? I need a fucking tall right scared. Good effort, mate. Fuck, that's the most frightening thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> that man is a fucking geezer. That man there is a fucking geezer. He is. Oh, look at that, going mad level this film. Fucking mad, my man, this is the man. Right. You're shaking. You're, You're shaking, shaking all over. I just like pumped out my bracket. I could just hardly hold my tools. Now stop, shake, get it back, stop, shake. This is like not to 100 and like one.